we slip on this kind of stuff. Because right away, all them demons, they don't have the power to do, you know what I mean? We go into this thing where we all of a sudden start demoting and degrading the things that we don't understand. And demotion and degradation means ignorance. And so we project then ignorance on it. And then we don't think that it's possible that we could be getting outsmarted by this thing, especially since it's a genius, right? Because in the Masonic lore, if you didn't notice, the whole thing is really surrounded by Shazam being a genie or a djinn. Now, the code is DJ. DJ is DG, which is dog, right? Because there's no vowels. Now, DJ, if you notice, there's, there's a mythos around DJ. And let's just say it in this context, like, I'm not talking about what's good. I'm not talking about what's bad. I'm telling you, I need to know what's going on. So whatever has to come across has got to come across. So in the bottom of the flyer on the Bohemian Grove, they say there's a little guy in the bottom corner. And I had it. I looked on the internet today. It's not there. It's in the picture album somewhere. I'll dig it up. But on the bottom, they have this being that they call DJ. And they say that DJ is basically the local spirit of Bohemian Grove. And he's like the one that is basically causes the most spiritual activity at the Bohemian Grove. Right. So that's one account of DJ. We also know that the Jal, which is actually the Arabic word for the jinn or actually the leader of the jinn, is basically DJ. We also can come into English and we start seeing that we got a word for DJ, but uh, it kind of means that we about to get crunk. Hey, Mr. DJ, play that sound, right? And this would have had told you already because there's no way that none of this can go on without you actually knowing about it because it cannot manifest. It cannot be in the field. Like it's got to be told to you directly so that you can put it in the old processor so you can complete the point to point system of how the reality looks static in the first place. And so when they say the DJ, what is a DJ? What does that stand for? A disc jockey. Now, what, what would that really say to you? What is a disc jockey? It's a, a jockey is a person that rides something. So it's saying the person who's riding the disc. So are there any beings that we keep seeing popping in and out of reality or they say are popping into reality because most people don't see them and they're riding in discs, right? And so you'll realize why there was 100% a connection between what people call UFOs and the jinn because they are the disc jockeys. They ride around in discs. Now, humans do too, though. So while you're pointing fingers, point them back at yourself. The thing about human beings, because I'm not sure how far along we're on the upgrade, but the human being has a Sri Yantra, which means curved, not straight line, like field that is rotating around their body, projecting a disc. So humans have some type of correlation and relationship with these beings because we know still through mathematics, though, everything comes from the same source. And this is why what you start finding throughout history is that you have even royal bloodlines, even in ancient tribes, making pacts and also making agreements and marriaging, making marriages and covenants between humans and entities from other worlds, also known as jinn. Now, conditions. Of course, there's rich jinn. <laughs> of course, there's jinn living in beautiful places like waterfalls or palaces in the sky. But just as there are for real jinn that are living so deep in the earth, this, that zo those zones, forbidden zones, are a direct result of what's called damnation. Meaning that in, when you're warped and you're carrying out certain activities over and over and over and over again because the virtual reality that you're creating next when you leave this world is based on the deeds in which and the manifestation and the memories that you've accumulated here they've continuously been in like this um uh what you would call like a vicious cycle you see what i mean and this is what they teach to magical practitioners that they say oh this is the fastest way to get to know god that's what the left hand path is it's t trying to learn and know god through suffering and darkness and distorted things and, and wickedness right and they tell them this is the fastest way to know god because see the god they're talking about is dj <laughs> you see what i mean because they're very specific that's why we were talking about uh um not just dozer which is another DJ, but we were also talking about uh, um, the Jed. So let's think about how the ancestors were explaining this, because remember to them, the Jinn weren't demonized. 
They knew the classifications of them. They knew the ones to stay away from. They knew the ones that they wanted around. They even said some of the jinn were Muslims. You see what I mean? So there, there's, a, there's a deep level of, of, of maturity that has to happen in these things. And I'll come to what I was going to say here in just a moment. Let's just keep going because there is a little bit in the notes here. So those who serve the jinn, okay? So let's clarify here that remember, as I was saying before, that now you literally can now see that there is another layer of the reality and the type of entities that live there, their clothes are their manifestation and their, or their imagination. So the things that they can turn into and the things that they can actually create makes up our mythos. OK, so when somebody would become inspired or see these beings by getting into their vibrational frequency or a connection with them, then they would actually bring those images even into our reality. They would paint them. They would. You see I me. Mean? So there. So humans, as I mentioned before, because this technology is now going on for thousands of years, became angel men or basically the gateway between the realm of the jinn and the jinn getting things from their world into our world. So like all the pyramids and all that kind of stuff, that's all how all the gen structures look in their world. There the are powers on earth too hidden to be seen and conspiracies too vast to comprehend. For years, the world has seen fact distorted, reality manipulated, and the truth concealed. concealed. Join the Pierre Sebat podcast, podcast to uncover the real meanings behind ancient aliens and their symbolism. So, um, and I, I want the audience just to really think about um, what he's saying in context to the angelic sailors and their control over the minds of men. So, once again, he said the following. He said, I have given the idea of extraterrestrial visitation a great deal of thought. If they are here, then we must consider the realistic possibility that they have infiltrated human culture. In other words, if the aliens can get here, and they are here, then they must have infiltrated human culture. Okay, so maybe there's a theoretical argument about whether they are here or whether they could arrive here, but if there is such a thing of alien beings and they do exist and they can traverse the large um, distances of space to arrive to planet Earth, then he's saying that the real consideration must be that we must at least have an open mind about the fact that they are here, that they have infiltrated culture. And when we look um, into ancient mythology, into ancient religions, into the inceptions of governments, the argument is clear that there is this alien intelligence, this angelic intelligence, uh, which has intercepted, which has impinged upon human culture. So in summary, the UFO phenomenon is part of a broader dialectic instrument through which the management of humanity is exercised. Alien infiltration within the remit of culture is subtle and yet when viewed holistically is very difficult to dismiss academically. So in other words, there, when we look at mythology, there is this compelling argument to say that alien beings have um, interfered within the evolution of mankind. And it is clear from the sheer weight of the documented evidence that we are not dealing with a psychic aberration. So we're not just here dealing with human psychology, but we are dealing with something which is physical, which is tangible. Um, we can say that there exists over one million photographs of UFOs. Concrete, their reality is substantiated throughout the world's many mythologies and religious scriptures. Their presence is testified to in thousands of classified reports from military personnel. Um, the proof is overwhelming. The pertinent question then which concerns us is not um, are they here, um, but rather the relevant question is what are they doing here and why are they attempting to influence the minds of men through state sanctioned laws and religion? Because these institutions, as I have shown, have been, um, have been founded upon um, an angelic an alien intelligence. So the proposition of alien arbitration is encoded into our cultural mascots, our religious belief um, systems and our symbols. 
I might also add that the current exopolitical position of looking towards our government or religious leaders for disclosure is extremely credulous. In other words, it's very naive. Um, this secret has been classified for thousands of years, um, so we are not going to get any information from the government. This information has been carefully monitored and, and it has been carefully manufactured for hundreds of years. And as we can see, the alien question, it's, question itself has been classified for thousands of years. So to actually think that our instigators are going to go public with this information is, in my opinion, extremely gullible. Disclosure can only come from the general public. We stand before the enormity of a phenomenon which has transgressed human space and has inserted itself into every aspect of human culture, into the very fabric of our social existence. Etymological evidence suggests that this force has rewritten the script of language. So not only have they um, um, rewritten our symbology, our codes of conduct, our codes of laws, our institutions, but they fundamentally have um, rewritten the script of human thought. Um, and I argue that this is actually to control us, to control um, the subject, to control us. Um, now the internal code of human thought, so they, they have hidden themselves within the script of human language, which is the internal code of human thought, um, a type of intellectual masquerade to serve its own agenda. So they have an agenda, and it's clearly not a human agenda. Um, for centuries, the angels, variously the aliens, have concealed themselves. As we said before, I refer to these beings as the Angelians. And they have concealed themselves from sight, um, a monolithic force that is both very real and is shown to intervene in history, casting a long shadow over humanity. Uh, we need not look to, um, to the skies to find evidence of alien civilizations. They are already here living amongst us um, and are found in our institutions of worship and encoded within the state. They are also found um, within our leaders, within the monarchical structure. Um, this bloodline which is deemed a special alien angelic. Um, so this is, um, this is also encoded within the upper and the lower house. Our political systems, our adversarial systems which represent this otherness. Um, this angelic bloodline. So what is more, this cultural symbiosis is evident both in our um, monarchical systems, our political, our financial systems. Um, it's, a, it's encoded within our symbology. Uh, we are, though, we can see now that this is a turning point for mankind. We are on the brink of major discoveries. And for the first time, we are in a real position to deconstruct what this force is um, and to lay it open and, and to have a real understanding of this force. Um, this force which um, has laid um, shrouded um, since the inception of human civilization. So we, we can see that really a, a new day dawn, dawns. We can see that man is, is not alone. And this is the general premise of the argument. We, we can see instantly that when we look at the um, seraphim, they themselves are deemed as being um, serpentine in appearance. Seraph is, is a serpent. But this bloodline is deemed as um, coming from a sailor's bloodline, sap on a sailor, safina a ship. Um, and the seraphim themselves are correlated with the serif, which is a noble um, in, in the Hebrew and Arabic, malak an angel, malak a sailor, melak a king. In Greek, archos, um, 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 archos which is a ruler, um, and we can see is cor correlated with ukos, a vessel. Um, and again, archon, which is this um, angelic uh, bloodline. But again, the connotation of the archon is of ukos, this vessel, this, this strange vessel. In the Latin, we said that, this, um, that the term saboth, um, uh, which is the angelic host, from sevet, which is a crew, so in other words, a naval itinerant. Um, but the Latin term hostis refers to an invading army, an army which is strange, which is different, which is an invasive army. And we see this also encoded within Islam as well. Man um, submits himself. Um, Islam is the submission of man. The term Islam um, means submission, but the, um, the etymology submission also means peace. So man has submitted himself via a covenant, a matriarchal covenant, and the um, symbiosis is this human angelic lineage, which is this royal or monarchical lineage, um, and that man himself is um, controlled through the systems of um, government government itself which is deemed as the ship of state and the government itself ties in with the um, temple sanctuary as we said before Norse a boat and, and now a, a temple sanctuary and to um, finish this lecture um, I just want to um, quickly um, give a quote from the X-Files because I think it's very pertinent um, with regards to uh, the evidence because 
quite clearly there is etymological evidence which substantiates the hypothesis that the um, angelic, the alien beings, they are one and the same thing, there's one and the same phenomenon, um, that, they, that they are here, that the evidence is already encoded within our symbology. Um, so I'm going to now use a, a, an excellent quote um, from the X-Files. So, um, in the X-Files, uh, there are two people. There's Mulder, who is an agent, who is um, he's examining the X-Files, the files that cannot be explained. And we have um, Deep Throat, who is an informer, who is informing uh, Mulder about the conspiracy. Now, Deep Throat himself, he says to Mulder, he says, Mr. Mulder, why are those like yourself who believe in the existence of extraterrestrial life on this earth not dissuaded by all the evidence to the contrary? And uh, Mulder answers him and says, because all the evidence to the contrary is not entirely dissuasive. Deep Throat answers him back, precisely. Mulder then asks him, they are here, aren't they? Deep Throat replies, Mr. Mulder, they've been here for a long, long time. So I just want to um, emphasise once again that the, we can show that they are here. They are definitely here. That, uh, as what um, the astrophysicist Chandra said, if they are here, then they've infiltrated human culture. And we can see that they have infiltrated human culture. They have instituted governments. They have instituted the monarchical lineage. Um, and um, I just now uh, would like to close and draw the audience's attention to a couple of products um, which are available on my website. I've um, recorded several DVDs on arcane symbolism. And also there is my book, The Murder of Reality, Hidden Symbolism of the Dragon, which deals with um, the jinn and uh, the serpent Agena. Thank you very much.